So we're going through the process <clears throat> of working of um, making the uh, hide of an animal as a covering to the Mishkan. That is the series of the Malachis, which is the shechting, the trapping of the animal, then the slaughtering of the animal, the skinning of the animal, then the tanning, making it into um, leather that is usable. Then there is the smoothing that we did last week. After it's been smooth, and now it's in the form of a leather. So now it has to be cut to size. So before it's cut to size, we have on page 269, <clears throat> we have scoring. Scoring is making a line on the material with the intention of cutting it to that particular size. So this would be actually the Abmalach would be, its purpose is to cut. The Tolda, which is also a Torah prohibition, is scoring a straight line in order to write on this straight line. We have in particular, when it comes to um, mezuzahs, the Torah. So it's scored in order to, since we don't have, don't actually have lines. So they they, they take a sharp instrument and make a line across the parchment in order that when the writing will be done, it will be done according to a line. So making a score on a material in order to use it later as a straight line, that is the Torah prohibition. On page 270, so whether one use a tool or one is going to do it with a knife, a nail, a fingernail, anything that is used for scoring, that is all included. So, yes. So is that why people say don't go with your nail? On That's correct. Not to make a, make, make, they can make a mark on the tablecloth that is scoring. However, on page 270, what about scoring on food? So we actually have a part of making the hamaytzi yeah. is scoring. So it does not apply to food. It does not apply to food. And therefore, we do make that scoring on the chala. And actually, we have two types of baked chala. One would be if anyone has the, um, the sour bread chala. Anyone know what sour bread chala is? Oh, the, sour, sour, the, sour, the sourdough. The sourdough. Mm -hmm. So that oh, is score, score. so that is a very hard item to cut. And you actually have to really do that cutting with a knife. So in order to make it easier to do the cutting, you score it first. So you started already the process, and then you're going to cut into it. If anyone did any work with lumber, are you going to <laughs> anyway? Just let me. So let me. Uh, let's, if you have uh, if you have a, a piece of wood, you're going to take the saw. You're going to start sawing. It's going to jump all over the place. Yeah. So what you do is first you score it, you make a line, and then when you're going to be sawing, you're going to be going into that line, and that's going to make it keep it straight and 
and you'll, you'll able to accomplish it with more proficiency. The same would also be when it comes to the breads that are really have to put an effort to cut them. So like this, when you're going to be cutting it, it's going to jump over, over the place. So therefore you're going to score it. Then when you're going to start cutting, you're going to be cutting efficiently. It's going to be in that score. So our challah is not the type of, of, of bread that really needs, you know, <laughs> that really needs sawing when you're going to uh, when you're going to cut the bread. So what you really do is you're just saving yourself a fraction of a second. So why do we score it? Why do we score it? Yes. Um, so that it's not a half sec between making the bracha and cutting it because you already started cutting it. Before. Okay. So we're trying to minimize the. So when we when we make a bracha over an item, we try to minimize the time from the time of the making of the bracha until the time of eating. So during the week, when we make a bracha on bread, halachically, what's, we, we try to make a bracha on a, on a complete item. That is a special chashivas. Halachically, if something is cut, and if you pick up the smaller piece, the larger piece goes along with it, it's still considered halakhically complete. And therefore, during the week, if you've noticed when people make hamaytzi on bread, you tear the bread, you have a slice of bread, you'll tear it so that it's still going to be attached, so it's still complete, considered whole. But you are going to tear it in order after you made the hamaytzi, which you're going to do with all 10 fingers, you're going to hold. So generally, when you make a, a bracha on a food item, you will hold it in your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, right hand, left-handed, left hand, you don't have to hold it with two hands. The exception is when you make hamaytzi. Have you learned this in other classes? When you make the hamaytzi, we hold with both, with 10 fingers, the significance of 10. Does anyone know the significance of 10? Mm -hmm. 10 is, there are 10, 10, it's, 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 it's 10, there are 10 mitzvahs that are connected with the process of making bread. Starting with the uh, not to plow with two animals together, you have leket, shikha, peyam, you have the different mitzvahs that you separate. So all together it's 10 mitzvahs. So it's connected to the 10 mitzvahs. Also the bread is a source of bounty, of sustenance, of, of, uh, of uh, Hashem gracing us. So therefore we have the the 10 words in Ashrei. We have that one should uh, have in mind, Hashem opens his hand and satiates everyone with bounty. The passage before is the eyes of all look expectantly to you. And you give them their food at their proper time. So in that passage, you have 10 words. And then these 10 fingers opening up the bounty of Hashem, giving us our needs. So we have a point of holding it with 10, with all 10 fingers when we make it. So when we're going to be using it in the, in the, in the, in the weekday, we're going to tear the slice of bread that it still be connected, that if you hold a smaller piece, the big, larger piece is still connected. And then we make the hamaytzi, and then we break the bread, and then we eat of the bread. <laughs> yes? Wait, we can't tear off the piece first? We try to make the, uh, the uh, bracha on something that is complete, bigger, a bigger piece. If you have a choice, if you're going to, eating, if you're going to be eating two pieces, one is bigger, one is smaller, you're going to be eating them both, make the block over the bigger piece. So we try to make something that's complete, a complete slice. So on Shabbos, we're not going to rely on having the hamaytzi on the two loaves, which correspond to the two arrangements in the base of Mikdash and Lechem Aponim, which is Lechem in Hashemayim, the heavenly bread, the earthly bread. All of this is done when we make the hamaytzi on Shabbos.
So we try to make it complete. So therefore we're not going to tear into it, but we are going to score to make the time between the hamaytzi and the cutting of the chala and the eating of it as minimal as possible. So even though you're, you're even though you are saving a second, it just tells you a lesson how every moment is important, even a second. Time is a gift of Hashem. We emphasize this on Shabbos, but just scoring it instead of cutting into it, we still make that score in order to save us that moment of making the, from the time you make the hamaytzi to the time you're actually going to be eating the chala is going to be minimized by a second. <laughs> when it comes to actual a chala that is a sourdough chala, so that actually you actually have to you know, <laughs> cut with uh, putting in effort, then the scoring will actually save you time. But the chala that we have now is a very light and fluffy chala, and it takes no time at all to cut it. But at the same time, we do save that, still make the scoring, and that is the lesson for us. So scoring on food is permitted. If someone wants to um, give you the examples over here, if you have a cake and you want to make portions and you want to make sure you have enough portions, so then you make those lines, the scoring, so then when you're going to cut it, you're going to know how many portions you're actually going to have. The same things people who peel an orange. When you're going to peel the orange, you score it, and then you make the scores, and then when you, the peel comes off easily in sections, all of this is permissible on Shabbos because it is for food. Any questions on this? I wasn't here, but like, is that why they, they scrape the knife on the bread? Yes. But like, it doesn't really cut into it. Just scoring. Just scoring, they make the lines. Just, just like a little tiny line. So if someone does score the, the challah, and then when you're actually, so you score the challah first, hold them both, make the hamaytzi, and then you put one down, you take the other one, and now you have to cut it. So the scoring was that you're going to cut it on the scoring line. Mm -hmm. However, if you're going to have to look for the scoring line, it's going to take more time to look for it than actually cut on that line. So, yeah. so, so therefore, if you, so usually the person who scores it knows where the scoring is, you're going to cut on that score. But if, it's, you, if it got lost, it was too light, you can't find it, you're going to start looking for it. You're wasting more time looking for the score as you are going to cut it. So therefore, you cut it. As, it seems like almost imaginary. Like It doesn't look like they're actually scoring. Well, it matters time. who does it. Like, matters very who, gentle. matters who does it. Or at least in the shop, like yeah. the, the homes that I see on shop, it's, like, so, it's a very gentle mark, almost like... Um, Symbolically, I see this scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you do it. Yes. So it's not, it's not like some sort of tradition. It's just like literally a scoring mark. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah. It's like a pack of Yes. That's hilarious. So it's just saving time yeah, in between so score it, save bracha, and then right away you know where to cut. Yes. Especially, that's why I gave the example, especially if it is actual. A uh, challah that needs, you know, that that's a that's a um, crushed. Uh, score it first. If you try, you know, I gave you the same example where you're going to, it it makes it easier to start cutting in that place. But, but they never but, cut in the same spot. So that's again, that's what I'm saying. If it's they, the scoring should be such that you should be able to cut on that line. If it's going to take you longer to find it, then you defeated your purpose. So what's the point of scoring it? No, no, because you should not on that line. Oh, because you should score it such that you should be able to find it. Do the boys learn this? They know this when they're. They should, uh, it should be an initial phenomenon. I mean, the men they know this. Um, I don't think I've ever seen somebody cut on the score. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, I, 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 like I, I teach this. I, I cut on the score line. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to disprove you. I'm just thinking like yes. and I always see like a and then there's a cut not on the line. So the lesson is there. The lesson is there. The lesson is there that scoring is important. Okay. Okay. Well, now the um the next now I know how to explain it to everyone. Now the uh, after the after the scoring is done. So we said there are two parts to it. One would be to make a straight line in order to do writing. That's a tolda. That is the offspring. That is also a Torah prohibition. However, in the Mishkan, 
after the scoring was made for actual cutting the leather, the covering of the mishkan, the tachash animal, and the red dyed of uh, the ram's hide. So then the next step is cutting in, in a constructive way that you're going to be cutting according to the scoring. So we actually had a previous malach of kaireya, which is to cut, mechatech, which is to cut. What is the difference between the two? Kaireya is connected to sewing. Kaireya is cutting a material with the intention of re-sewing it. That's how it was done in the Mishkan. So you're taking the material that was in the Mishkan in case there was a hole. So in order to mend that hole, so if you're just going to sew the hole together, it's going to come out bunched together. That's not the way you want it. So what you would do, you would cut it completely, bring both and cut out that section that has the hole in it. So, so now we have, Okay, we have our hole. <laughs> now, if we're going to sew this together, it's going to look like this. When you open, open it up, it's going to have it not very, not very professional looking. So, it doesn't look too good. So, what you do is you cut it, cut out the hole. I should have scored it. it wouldn't be right. <laughs> okay. I'm cutting out the hole. Now what I'm going to do is bring both sections together without the hole. And now it's going to be a neat, a neat mending. So that's why we have Kaireya is tearing with the purpose of re-sewing. Then it's a total prohibition. And the Rabbanon said that even if you were going to tear it without the intention of re-sewing it, the fact that you're tearing a material, that itself is forbidden. Now, when it comes to mechatech, over here, you're cutting to size. So that's a, sp a specific way of cutting. You're not just cutting it, but you're cutting it to a certain size. After you've scored it, you're going to be cutting on that scoring line. So that's why we have it as two malachas. One would be the malach of kireya, tearing with the intention of re-sewing. And then we have mechatech, cutting something to a specific size. So cutting something to size is a malach on its own. So this is on 271. So now we're cutting the hides of the ram and the tachash to a precise measurement. And the av malach is cutting leather according to a measurement. And the tolda is cutting off something by hand, which is some commonly cut by hand, if you are interested in a certain size. Same would also be that cutting anything with, a, uh, with an object, with a tool, which is uh, for a particular measurement. So the examples are given. <clears throat> cutting a piece of wood to make a split uh, to, to make a, a toothpick you want it for a certain size that's the malacha of achatech. cutting a fabric or thread to a specific size measured length that is malacha of achatech. cutting paper according to a certain measurement is also for a certain size. So all of this is a part of this malacha. Um, we have people who, who have wine that comes with a cork. So if you're not drinking everything at this season, you want to, at this sitting, you want to close the bottle. So you have the commercial bottle closers that you actually put in, closes. Then most people will take the cork itself and there's the thinner side and the thicker side. The thicker side is not going to go back into the bottle. The thinner side 
you push it into the bottle, that's going to be your bottle. It's going to close your bottle. Now, sometimes the cork would be too expanded. You're not going to be able to fit it back. So cutting the cork to size that should fit the opening of the bottle is this malacham, causing cutting something to one measurement. So that cannot be done. The same thing can also be the plastic bags that have the markings. All of this is included in this malacham. That would include cutting the plastic bags off a roll, cutting the paper towels on their perforation. All of this is a part of this malacha because you want to cut it that particular size. As far as food is concerned, so then you could cut the food as long as it is for eating purpose. Making um, gives here an example on 274. I don't know if it's a practical example, but uh, here it speaks about you want to make a stand for a candle and you're using a potato, cutting it out specifically so the candle will fit. That goes into this malacha. I don't know if it's... Uh, Wait, I missed it. I'm saying, over here, this person wants to have... So first of all, the candle is mukta. I don't know why they gave this example. The candle is mukta, you can't do anything with the candle. But over here, they're saying that you want to have a stand for the candle and you're cutting out a potato for the stand of the, potato, of the candle. I don't know why they gave this example, but anyway, it sounds nice. This is on the bottom of page 274. So, uh, but the, so you can't handle the candle to begin with, it's mukta. So why are you making, uh, why are you making a, a stand for the candle that you can't use anyway on Shabbos? Where's our demo? Huh? Where, where's our yeah. demo? Why did you bring a potato? <laughs> I'm not, I don't have the culinary yet, but anyway. Um, Where it would be um, practical, but that would not go into this malacha. Some people do make from different vegetables, they make specific decorations let's say when it comes to a watermelon you cut the rim make it like a like a boat uh, people will make from radishes they will make flowers you have people who are very talented in making from different fruits and vegetables they will make these decorations it does not go into this malacha because but it does go into another malacha, which we will speak about in the in the future so um so cutting without measuring that would be if it is needed for Shabbos. So then one would be permitted to do so. The, um, they give you an example here, they give you two, two options. This is on 275. You have a tablecloth that comes in a roll. There's a perforation, it's a certain size. Each, each, uh, each section has a certain size, it has perforation. Tearing on the preparation is this malacha of cutting to a specific size. That would be a part of this malacha that we're speaking about. What about tearing the tablecloth not on the preparation? So here it brings two, two opinions about this. One would be making a tablecloth. If you have a whole roll, then you are cutting a section of it making that into a clay, tablecloth. Is that going to a finishing product? That it's own malach we're going to speak about, Makam Patish, doing the last uh, steps in finishing a product. So this is an unfinished tablecloth because it's attached to a whole roll. Tearing off a section, now you're making a tablecloth. Is that permissible as far as tearing is concerned? So we said that cutting something itself is its own prohibition. Chatech is cutting to size. But besides cutting to size, there's also just cutting teireya, which we said rabbinically is forbidden to cut something to begin with. So then the question is, this plastic going to the cat, is, it, is the malacha of teireya, which is malacha of cutting something in order to re-sew it, 
is that only with material or does it also apply to plastics and things of that of that nature? Two opinions about it. Most of them, are, most are strict about this. So then, according to that opinion, you can't cut the tablecloth to begin with. Then there are those who have a leniency that if you see it, if you're doing it for for food matters, and that would go into the when I. Um, when I uh, um, conferred of how to teach about the tearing comes into opening up. This was not open before Shabbos. What do you do? You have a box of cereal. You want to have some cereal on Shabbos. Could you open the box? You have the, the, uh, the nash. You have the potato chips. You have the corn chips. You have all the other things that are in the, in the packages. So how should I teach it to the class? And I was told, Teach the class that everything has to be open before Shabbos. Don't go into the details that you are going to open on Shabbos, how you should do it, which includes that you should not, make sure not to tear any letters because you are erasing. Make sure you're not making it into a finished product, which is going to be now a box. You have to do it in a destructive manner. Don't teach them that. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to tell you about ripping the bag if you are going to be um, uh, opening a nash, you have to rip it in such a way that you cannot use the bag now as a storage for the rest of the nash. Let's say you have a potato chip bag. So you're going to open up the, you're going to open up, you're going to rip it. So, so I'm going to teach you what I was told to do is open it before Shabbos, have someone who was designated for all the, all the, the those packages that have to be opened, has to be opened before Shabbos. So if you need the tissues for Shabbos, again, you're going to be using tissues that you're going to check, you're going to take two at a time, and see what happens if they're interfolded one with another, or the other tissues that are ribbing. So even if you open it before Shabbos, if they are a connected one to the other, then you have an issue of not to take them apart. So therefore, when you're going to be buying tissues for Shabbos, you're going to check to see that they are Shabbos friendly. So this brand, Elegant, is Shabbos friendly, so, so it's good for Shabbos. Yes. Um, okay, so when you're opening something like in a way that it can't be used, let's say like, you have like a box of crackers. Um, let's say the box is already open. Um, in the box, there's like a plastic. You know, it doesn't have any writing or any perforation, just like a plastic. Like, can you cut off the top? Because um, if you were going to keep storing the crackers in there, like the ones that you don't eat, you would need to like tape it closed after Shabbos. Is that okay, or you need to like completely destroy it so you can't even put the? Yeah, you empty out the empty out the contents in another completely, in a completely, and then discard it. So that would be that you're not making because the issue is: Are you making now a vessel that's now usable? That would be one of the issues that that's involved. So, um, so that's uh, so I, I taught you that everything has to be open before Shabbos, right? <laughs> Okay, and, then, and also you have to make sure that never to, to tear letters, that's erasing, not to make it, so uh, we've learned about the, uh, so the, there's more leniency when it comes to the flimsy packaging, when it comes to a box, so now you're actually making into a box that is usable for further use, you have to be careful is also not to unglue the top, usually there's <laughs> this okay. is this is glued together. <laughs> okay. so, you can't open that. so so uh, so this would have its own. So in addition to tearing something, so you do have another issue is can't do that. Uh, uh, opening up something that is glued together. We said that something that is uh, glued together that would go into the category of, 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 of tearing. So how would you open this tissue box? It also has a pattern uh, on it. Would you like, can you like flip it over and just stab yeah, like, 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 like all this all what I would do is I would, I would cut it along, you know, somewhere here. You can use yeah, our, um, so here. you're going to take a knife and uh, yeah, stab I'm, I'm, around. Could you do, could you rip it over here? No, because there's a pattern there's here. There's patterns here, so we would stay to Why, why the pattern matter? Well, we, we don't want to tear it's something erased. that is, it's erasing. We don't want to erase. Oh. It's like writing. It's like it's the same it's, it's as paper. But this has perforated lines. But you're not going to use the perforated lines. You're not going to use that to open up this. You know, this perforated lines over here are not made to open, but made to push down. So when it comes to the end of the package, it pushes it up, like and now you're able yeah. to to have the package instead of uh, you know, it's a practical so application here. I did not know that I open up the tissue mm -hmm. box on Shabbat. 
Well, oh, if you if you if you have no other uh, means of, of 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 paper, then that's an uh, that's a necessity that. So if it's necessity, how should I open it? So open it up oh, in a place where there's no writing. Okay. And, uh, no writing, no preparation. Right? No, it's not going to be on a on a perforation. You're not going to cut it on the perforation. Okay. You're going to cut it down. Yeah, and then, then what to do is I, I would I, I would then take out the the, the contents. Is that what it? Is? You take, is that what it is? Oh, but look, you're going to get. If you oh, you can't unglue it. So but could you open it? Let's say from here. From, from, from. If you're not going to, if you're not going to, if you're not going to, um, no, you have all these, de yeah. these, uh, these uh, decorations here. We don't okay, want so to. You're going to take the knife and you're going to cut like this, right? That's correct. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And then you'll pull it off. Sorry, yes. You'll pull like this and you'll pull it off. I'm going to show you. It was like Bob the Builder was backwards. If the knife, it would work better. <laughs> I, I don't have a knife. Well, I'm just saying, you know. I would, I would take out the contents of this after that, not to use this box. You see, the way you described it, I just did, instead of doing it over here on the preparation, we did it over here and made it now as an opening for this box. So what I would do is take the contents of this box out. So I'm not going to use this now as a vessel. And I'm going to have the tissues to be able to use. So Imagine if you did all this, and then when you open it, you saw that there was writing on the inside that you come through. But also, but also, I have to open it somehow, so I can do the malacha of using a knife. So the knife itself is not, it's, it's not a, so which malacha is it? It would be some kind of work, using a knife on an unfood object, some kind of work. She's in a, well, oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I can't leave the tissues in here. Now, right? okay, you take it out, yes. okay. Now you could put it back. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. So you can't like just open it and pull out. Because, because now you've made an opening that's, that's going to be useful. You've made now a, a useful box. So you have to pull out the whole thing. Discard the box. That's what you need? No, no, take out everything. Put it in a plastic bag. Okay. Yes. So that is why that is why that is why I'm teaching you that everything should be opened, right, Khadva? That's why I'm teaching the class that everything should be opened before Shabbos. But it's to truly understand. So so again back again. Let's so let's let's go back again with the with the knife. Yeah. Um, the knife itself, using it to to, or to cut things, it matters if a malach is being done without the knife. Okay. If no malach is being done without the knife, and the knife is held, it's not a specific um, tool for this. In other words, a saw would be different than a knife. A knife is not used to, we don't use knives to to cut boxes. A okay. saw is made something to, so I would not use a saw for this unless I'm using a saw <laughs> for food. <Never> mind. <laughs> the, uh, so I am going to use this. Um, so therefore using a knife where I can't do it with my hands, my, but my first choice would be trying to do it manually. If I can't do it that way, then I would use a knife. It's not a special tool for, for um, cutting boxes. It's not what it's made for. Okay. So it's made, it's made for. a tool that's not made for the for the task for which you're using. That's correct. Okay. So in other words, it should be a shinui. It should be done in an, in an unusual manner. Okay. So therefore, knife. and therefore, <laughs> the knife would be used for this. That's not what that's it's specifically that. used for. And um, and then I'm opening. I'm, I'm destroying the box because I'm not going to use it as a container. Mm -hmm. So then I'm doing so, destroying something. Not doing it in a in a, a, a useful way is rabbinic. Rabbonin said, because of the honor of a human being, they will put their prohibition aside in order to be able to get the tissues that are needed for the situation. You do have to do you do need the tissues. So the Rabbonin said, because of that, they're going to take their prohibition of destroying something aside, and they're going to permit you. To do so but let's say you're already in the bathroom when you realize that the mm -hmm. tissues are that there is no tissues left you have to open a new box and you would have to leave the bathroom locate a knife bring it back but well in that case i would try you know manually to 
I see what I could do. Along the glue or what? No, 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 no. I would try to give me the other box that's already destroyed. See what see what I could do. Tear it with your teeth. No, I think I would be able to. Could I? I don't know if you could, could stab your thumb. Could, could I break it anywhere? Um, could you soak it? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, no, but then, but then you your tissue is wet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, but and what if you like wring it out accidentally? How would I oh, open it up? You would be erasing the writing. Would I be able to get into this? Maybe with pressure? Okay, what I need is just a starter. Once I started, then I'm able to. I, I, need, I need a starter. So that's where. I think she's showing us it's not really possible. Yeah. Those who have big nails. <laughs> In that case, if I'm like sitting in the bathroom and I'm slamming my fist Ooh. against the box, and I just have to go use the appropriate thing. Take the soap. The soap handle has a pointy thing. You can stab the pointy thing. I don't have a soap handle. Oops. Okay, so um, Wait, can you please I have a question. What, 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 was, um, what was suggested, I, I guess, what I no, it was suggested if you do have the roll, then the number one choice would be again. It's a little, you know, grossed out, but you you, you use it and then you um, you use as much as needed. It's still on the roll. You put it into the toilet. You flush. That's going to rip it for you. You're not going to do. You're going to be ripping it indirectly. So whether it does in the preparation or not in the preparation, it doesn't make a difference because you're not doing it manually. It's 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 being done. Um, but that's saying I'm saying, 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 I